talk about this topic. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction. Diana, I really want you to talk about what you're doing and why we're doing these sessions. But today in this in the time that we have together, we're going to talk about um, this very cool project that Diana has has initiated and that there is a Kickstarter for, which she'll talk about more later. But in, to introduce all of this to you and to show you how this works, um, we're going to share with you something because the two of us, as we got to talking about the project she's doing, that is for the Venice Biennale, which is the biennial event. It's an art event, a huge cultural event in Venice. It's coming up in 2022. Diana's doing something that's going to let us kind of get engaged with this during 2021, which I think is amazing. You'll say more about that. But we found out that we had a common interest and that we've both been to Venice. She's been there many, many times. She knows it much better than I do. Um, and we're both in love with the city, but we're also both big fans of a certain section of the city called the Canareggio. And we're going to talk about that and we have some pictures. So we're gonna do a, a little bit of a combination, talk about the Kickstarter, talk about Diana's work, talk about a travelogue. <laughs> So how does that sound? That sounds great. Yeah, lots yeah. of amazing stuff to cover. Yeah, a lot of stuff to cover. So we'll be here for a little bit and we also can see your questions if you have any. So if, you, if you're watching us live, you can go ahead and post your questions and then we'll um, answer those while we're here. So before we, um, before we get into the part about our favorite part of town in Venice, um, tell me a little bit more, tell everybody a little bit more about why we're doing this and the project that you have and how you got selected to do this really cool project for the Biennale. What is the Biennale? So I actually just found out um, this week how I got selected. I did this amazing art fair back in 2019, seems forever ago now, in Santa Fe. And one of the reps of the European Cultural Council was walking through the fair and saw some of my art, um, which is inspired by Venice um, in part, and took a note. And then I all of a sudden got an email at the beginning of the year saying that they would like me to submit a proposal actually at the end of 2020. Everything is a blur with COVID, right? And I... Um, thought of this amazing project where I could combine all of my different hats. So I could not only create two monumental paintings that are inspired by the city of Venice itself, but there could be a whole educational element to it, which is what all of us parents are missing right now, is fun, interactive, educational, elements that our kids would be looking forward to learn from and these paintings will not just be paintings but they will be like little treasure maps almost they will have clues hidden in them that we would go over on a monthly basis kind of have a topic like Karen and i have had over the last couple of conversations and that we would explore with kids on a monthly basis along with those clues through 2021 and they could learn about the amazing history and geography and art history of Venice, which is just so full of, it's just such a potluck of cultures and oh, yeah. civilizations that have impacted it. And it is so much fun to learn. I am one of those people who is always learning and I'm so excited to be learning alongside everybody who will be getting little tidbits about Venice. And this is what we're doing today, a really fun exploration of our favorite neighborhoods in Venice. Um, and the third part of this project is truly showing how inspirational Venice is to all kinds of creatives. So I will also be creating outfits that will be inspired by some of the carnival pictures that I have from Venice and will feature fabric design that is inspired by Venice and hold a contest for everyone who is actually there 
to, so that their potential sketch would be an inspiration for next fabric design that will appear for Gallerista, which is wow. the fashion line that I had started. So three different sections, all of them happening this year, even though the Biennale, the actual live portion of the event is happening from April through November, 2022. But the biggest chunk of the work will be happening now. And I would really love for everybody to be a part of it. Oh, yeah. And you've made a way for people to be a part of it for um, uh, for them to be engaged in it uh, through the Kickstarter that you're doing to raise money, because this is not this is not something that anybody is paying you to do. You have to raise your own funds to make this happen. Right. Right. This is um, a true public art event and it will require quite a bid in terms of putting it together so there's money that's going towards the materials and the production and the time it's going to take to create those amazing monumental paintings and some of you who have been following i just started on the first one and it is 60 by 89 inches so it is a wall size painting and um is going to be quite an undertaking so quite a few months of work on that um money going into putting together the fashion pieces as well to go along with the paintings then i would want to make the supplies for whoever is going to participate virtually or in person available as part of this project so that is another cost associated then of course the shipping the installation the audio catalog that will be available, the printed catalog that will be available of the show, um, all of the research that's going into putting together the quests and traveling to Venice, of course, to map out all of the different sections that will be part of this treasure hunt and quest will also be will also be a part of it. And so it's it's just a lot of pieces that need to be put together and I'm super excited. And I think this will, there, there were 600,000 people that walked through this particular type of an exhibit during the last Venice Biennale. And I would want this to be accessible to not only people who are there, but through all of this year to tons and tons of virtual supporters who are traveling in isolation and learning in isolation and are looking for ways to grow. So it's an enormous undertaking. I am in awe of you for even undertaking this whole thing. Um, and what I think is so cool about this and why I'm like really promoting this through the Mojo Maker program and the Mojo Maker channels is because I'm a STEM person. I'm, my, my whole family was a science, technology, engineering, math kind of a community, but my heart is with art. That's really where I, I thought I would be a Barbie doll dress designer when I was growing up for some reason. <laughs> And um, and I did that. I actually designed dresses for and sewed dresses by hand for Barbie dolls, and um, and so I am so passionate about the idea that in STEM it needs the A, the A in STEM to make it as make it steam, right? That art is what makes everything move. Our creative, we are creative beings, and to to have that A in STEM is uh, is an essential element to um, you know math and technology and engineering and science. We can't really be our best at that without the arts. And what I love about this is that it's so integrative. And we're going to talk about Venice now a little bit because Venice is the perfect place for this. It's the the history of Venice, it, it, it was like a focal point for so many influences in the history of the, of the medieval world, for sure, and as well as in the Renaissance and the modern world. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. And, and so it, the opportunity for everyone who's listening to this is if you are doing enrichment for your family at home, you know, you're having to be a virtual traveler during lockdown and you don't have access to all of these things that would normally be something you would use for your kids enrichment. If you're doing that, then you have this opportunity to kind of 
participate in this in a way because Venice makes such a great place to do an integrative study on uh -huh. history, geography, soci social studies, and art. So that's, I'm super excited about this, as you know, Diana. So that's one of the reasons, but I wanted to make sure everybody understood, you know, Kaya, why are we doing this um, as part of, you know, on the Mojo Maker channel? <laughs> and, um, and that's why, you know, you oh. cannot have good science and technology and engineering and math without art. So that's, I think, pretty been pretty well established. So anyway, let's move on. You, We're going to show people um, how later to get to your Kickstarter. Well, let's tell them now. Your Kickstarter is at www.dianastelin.com. Mm -hmm. yeah. Backslash. So I um, Venice. backslash to Venice, uh, but it's also accessible via the homepage. So I made it easier for people to okay. see it. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. So that's um, we'll post we'll post the URL in the link underneath um, this video. So wherever that goes, you'll see the link. Also, I'm going to post some other links to pictures and some videos about Venice that you might find interesting if you want to find out more about. If you've never been to Venice, we're going to take you on a little bit of a virtual tour. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, let's talk about Conoreggio. So, or let's talk a little bit about Venice in general, because um, it's really unique. I think a lot of people associate Venice with water and gondolas and, and that kind of thing, but not really realizing that it's more than just this incredible Italian city on the sea. It has a pivotal role in history and, um, and it has an incredibly unique architecture because what, there's like 118 islands that make up the city of Venice. And that's why everything is all connected with water and these canals and bridges, right? Yeah. So, um, and the very famous bridges, some of them are very famous, others less so. But it's it's amazing because I've been there four times and it is incredibly difficult to find the same exact location yeah. <laughs> because there's so many bridges and it's so it, it's just all very interconnected. But um, it's really fun to get away from those mainstream tourist streets and just roam the mm -hmm. city where people live. And I think that is why I love the neighborhood of Canareggio so much because it is the second largest area and it is where people are actually still living and working and creating. And just like you're saying, there's so many crafts that had originated in Venice and are still being kept up and they take such great pride in everything that they're doing from Murano glass to mask making to gondola making and there's such a huge struggle right now on the part of Venetians to show how valuable those crafts are as opposed to the Chinese knockoffs that also end up in Venice and are sold to tourists to really make that distinction between what is original and what is um, and what is fake and what should be valued and explored and studied. Um, and that is partially why I wanted to put this project together because I would like to highlight the mosaic artists, the mask makers, um, the glass artists that are living and creating in Venice. And there's so much of that, that is the lace makers of Burano, um, that is just, it's an island right outside of Venice. Um, so many incredible things that are native to that particular city and come out of there um, that tourists might not necessarily think of as important in terms of growth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I, I'd love to kind of get people introduced to Venice a little bit. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to jump right over. I'm going to hide your pictures and mine. So 
that we can bring up the pictures. Let's, so let's see, let's do this. Let's, um, Here we are. Oh, you couldn't. Oh, all right. Let me turn the pictures off. You couldn't. You couldn't hear when I was talking. No, no. But I, I, I love nobody it. could hear. Maybe nobody. I was muted. Maybe. Oh dear. Okay. Oh, so yeah. I was muted no, during that whole time right. I was talking. Sorry about that, guys. When I was talking. No. Ooh. Yeah. When so. Oh no, no. But I'm gonna turn off my phone. Right.
Okay, Diana, that should be better. Yeah. So anyway, these um, this city had uh, a Jew. I, I was giving this entire monologue about how the city worked, and <laughs> no one could hear me. Uh, we're gonna maybe have to do that again. But the the pictures there are basically representative of a, of my walking tour as I was trying to get to the Jewish ghetto that day, and um, and taking pictures. I wasn't really sure where I was at until I got to the Campo Nuovo. Nu nu uh, Nuovo uh, Ghetto. And ghetto is an Italian word that means foundry. So the entire Jewish ghetto area um, was actually a foundry and the Jewish community was built there. Where did all these people come from? So Jews were primarily merchants. It was the only occupation that was left available to them since Roman times throughout all of Europe. And when um, and so they became very good. That's why they're known as money lenders. That's why they were very big in finance, is that they weren't allowed to own property. They weren't allowed to do agriculture. They weren't. They were. They were pretty much shopkeepers, uh, and um, and involved in finance. And one of the things they were very good at was in was shipping finance, and the Jews in. The, in what became known as the Jewish ghetto, were, were shipping financiers and, and even financed some of the crusade missions to the Holy Land that departed from that part of Europe. So it's really got some very interesting like um, impacts and I won't take up time because I, I had a lot of dead space in there for everybody. I won't take up a lot of time going back through all of it again, but the Jewish quarter in Canareggio was um, where the Jews were isolated. So the word ghetto comes from that foundry, but the idea of it being a walled off, isolated area where Jews live came from the fact that at night they would pull up the bridge to the Jewish neighborhood in Venice and isolate all the Jews uh, during nighttime hours um, in the ghetto. Some people will say that was for their protection um, I don't buy that, but um, it was that that was the way life happened. And because they were in this very confined space in this neighborhood, um, and and Diana, you know more about the the way the buildings were, but the very first skyscraper ever built was in the Jewish ghetto because they were growing as a population and they had nowhere to go but up. And so they stacked their homes um, and built them up and up in, in the Jewish ghetto where people still live today. It's in a, it's a neighborhood, right? Yeah, it's actually the second largest. And the word ghetto, like you said, originates from there. This was the very first Jewish ghetto that actually exists in the world. And it's a pretty incredible because I, I didn't know that. It's just such a common, common, word to be used and it's just uh, amazing that that's where yeah. that's where it starts and and a lot of times jews living in the ghetto were living on the ground level which as you can imagine gets pretty moist because yeah. of the water so there are no windows the ceilings were only at the most five feet nine yes. inches high i wouldn't um, have so been able to stand up yeah, um, so they lived with no windows, with pretty foul smells, because imagine the, the hygiene back in those days and not really having windows and their only opportunity to be somewhere where they could feel elevated were in synagogues because those were built up higher. So that's when they would actually ascend the steps to get to the synagogues. The first one was the German synagogue built in 1528. Um, and then there were four additional synagogues, which um, one of them was a private Ashkenazi synagogue. Um, and right now, actually, one of the projects that the Venetians are super excited about is the restoration of the Jewish Museum. And one of the major things that they're doing as part of that is building a potential apartment unit 
that would mm -hmm. have existed back in those days just to really give people a sense of what the living conditions were like um, for somebody living in the ghetto. Um, so a pretty a pretty interesting look into into history. Yeah. Um, yeah, all the Venetian Jews were rounded up during the World War II. Um, and very few of them returned as to as a, to bring it in about 500 day. right now that are still living within the city. So there is uh, about house, there are a few kosher stores and restaurants. Yeah. Um, and the the community is very much alive there are lots of symposia taking place because there's so much jewish history that has originated there so um, a lot of very important talks happening in terms of preserving the jewish culture and um and showing people the origins of venice the true origins of venice with the help of the jews that live there yeah it's really when you finally sit down and start to dive into it, it's like endless. It's like story after story after story after story. And it starts to link the world together in Venice in a way that you would just never imagine. Um, so I, um, I'm really, I apologize for that gap. I think I'm gonna edit this, this so that I can take something out of that. Maybe I'll, I'll figure out how to do that for, the, for a replay. But um, yeah, so the, so the idea behind this project, we're trying to give you a taste uh, uh, of the incredible depth and interest that's in, in Venice, in terms of all of these aspects of learning that can be a huge um, benefit for anybody, adults to children. And um, and so we're just encouraging people to take a look at this that way and um, maybe and participated in it from the standpoint of that enrichment, as well as funding a most incredible art project, which D Diana gave us a kind of a rundown. It's, it's more than just doing art, it's art education and it is fashion design. So there's so many different elements to it. Diana has a Kickstarter page because this is a very expensive project. She has lots of different ways for people to get involved. If you go out to her page at um, dianastalen.com, and you, I guess right there on the homepage now, they can do it. They don't have to do the backslash Venice, but they can. Okay. And so dianastalen.com is the website where you can find out where the Kickstarter is and how to get involved. And there is obviously a need to do this relatively soon because it is a, an enormous amount of money. I'm just curious, how much does an 89 by 60 inch canvas cost? Just out of curiosity. Well, what I am doing right now is I am working on it unstretched and then I would send it to Venice rolled up um, so that they would stretch it on site. Um, but just to get the canvas is about, 300 yeah. to 400 dollars to get it you know that that canvas of that size stretched and started not even and i'm using holbein paints which are the highest quality artist paints um, mixed in with wax mixed in with real gold leaf it's quite an undertaking in terms of just the materials yeah. alone yeah um and um and then there's a whole other section of putting the garments together um, because that is quite a production as well. So right. um, fabric coming in from one place and then the fabric design, which is inspired by um, by Venice would be another part of it. Um, so printing the digital printing of that. Um, so lots of moving parts Yeah, that are and yeah. Yeah, so this Kickstarter is going for paying for materials um, and the necessary support infrastructure to get all of this done and get the installation to Venice and installed in Venice. So um, I can't wait to go to Venice. <laughs> I Yeah, I'm just waiting to go back and to, I suppose we're gonna have to watch and see what uh, getting t tickets to Venice Biennale looks like, but that'll be cool. So um, anything else we need to, 
add here? So my you? project, I think, for kids when um, when we would talk and the second painting that I will be doing will be based on Conoreggio. It's a question oh. of where particularly in Conoreggio it will be. I am hoping that the borders will be opened up so I could do a quick trip, a scouting trip, so that I could do some plein air watercolors and then choose what specifically um, the actual spot will be. But the project for kids that are going to be following along virtually would be to think of architecture and of structure where some of the very first skyscrapers would go up. For instance, the last time that I was in Venice and we were walking through the streets, I had no idea that we were living right around the corner from one of the synagogues because it was just one of those gothic type uh, balconies that was that was the signage for it and I completely missed it because it's just layer upon layer upon layer of different architecture so that would be a really fascinating project is going through the different design elements of buildings that are present in Conoreggio and building that out from any materials that they might have at home. It could be Legos, it could be Ooh. construction paper, it could be collage, uh, but just really using Venice as inspiration and Venetian architecture and the stories about the Jewish ghetto and building a structure that will give people access to skylight and, um, and something that is made up of different styles architecturally. You know, you should contact Lego. And Lego. See if, mm. I'm serious. They're doing I'm all sure. kinds of architectural stuff. They just did a kit for San Francisco. Oh. Mm -hmm. What if they did a Venice kit? That would be amazing. That would be fun. Yeah. yeah. So, so this really is something that everybody can get involved in. If you're looking for some kind of a way to do enrichment for your family, this would be it. For me, it's like, I was so excited about this when I it was like virtual travel. I am so travel starved. I've, you know, been really fortunate as, as I know you do, you do a ton of travel. I've been fortunate to do a lot of travel in my lifetime and being grounded is the pits. So this is our this is our virtual travel fix, and yeah. Um, yeah. If there's any questions that we can answer, we're going to post these on Diana's Facebook page. We're going to post the video. Um, it's being shared, I think, with a watch party to Diana's page, and I'm going to post it on my uh, personal page. It's being hosted on YouTube. But if you have any questions when you see this, please. Um, uh, can they DM you, Diana? Can they just DM yeah, you? Yeah, definitely. Facebook? Definitely send a message. I would love to answer any questions, um, point you to any particular lesson plans um, that I'm putting together. Oh, um, and I, I sometimes I just wish I was in college forever because every opportunity to learn is so, so exciting for me. Um, and there is actually a symposium that I just found through one of the organizations that is focusing on preserving Venice, on Byzantine art in Venice. And I almost did a PhD in Byzantine art. That's how in love I was with mm -hmm. mosaics and icons and just that spiritual element of mosaics um, that I'm super excited to attend and then to share with the audiences that are supporting the project. Um, so lots so to learn. Any questions about how this works or whatever, they can DM you. Um, and that your your Facebook is Diana Stalen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Anything yeah. else we need to add? I'm s I am just am so bummed about the pictures, but um, we'll we'll figure that out. You know, I, it I'll might have been okay on your end. I was not hearing it, um, maybe but because I, I was in the I think if you're not hearing it, nobody heard it. That might be the truth. The truth. But we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll, make it, we'll make it right. And um, if we need to do a little picture show, I'll just add it to the feed. So, um, Good. yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and for taking the time. Please don't hesitate to go out to see dianastalen.com, to DM Diana with any questions that you have on Facebook. 
Um, and please get involved. I think this is going to be the most amazing way for us to like lift the fog of lockdown and have some real fun and enrichment and expand our boundaries and learn at the same time. Can't be better than that. So, okay, Diana. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you much. For having me. Appreciate okay. it. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye.